Giambra's hands, the leftovers are very good here. Obs on charm, Dem protector. So you're saying there's a chance. No, so, I don't think you are. So far, still accurate on my prediction here that Dylan was not going to get in any more damage. Has not happened yet. That's actually true. And that was on turn. That was on turn two. You said. Yeah, he that. got yeah. him one good right hook. You yeah. know, he got it. Got the hammer hand on the fire trick. Of Rocked him a little bit. That was five damage, but uh, Giambra's really settled in since then. Yeah. There's a wild slash on the morph. Who oh, spoke too soon? It's not quite over. Murphy might be getting him down to 23. I think we might have to revoke his command, actually. All right, he's going to un-Megamorph. Den Protector, well, a lot of good choices there. Going to go with Siege Rhino, though. Yeah, any four of them, any of the cards in the graveyard are good. Yeah. Can't misclick on that one. I think I like getting the Rhino the best. I think Hanger Back Walker is also defensible. None of this really matters. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of one-sided. Yeah. Windswept Heath will be sacrificed. Uh, I think besides Oz on Charm, the last card that was left in Josh's hand was Dramoka's Command. There is one of those, yeah. Pairs very nicely with Six Man and the Siege Rhino. Pairs very nicely with Josh's entire deck. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the A lot of good route. A lot of good routes here. Yeah. Here comes the Thopter token from Hanger Back Walker. Murphy going to fall to eight. There's Siege Rhino. Murphy going to fall to five. When Obzon is dominating, it is dominant. Especially in this kind of matchup, the, the red decks just don't have the catch-up. You need to get on top of them fast and punish them for playing only one spell a turn. Dylan wasn't ever really able to do this. There's a wild slash on Siege Rhino and a lightning strike. And these are the kind of exchanges that red decks, oh god, cannot make, especially when Jamoka's command becomes involved as well. Yeah, so, so you can prevent the damage and fight. And yeah, this is... That's, that'll be lethal. Only really lethal. Josh Yamber yeah, going to win game number one here over Dylan Murphy. Bit of a bloodbath there as Obzon Aggro does win game number one over Mono Red Aggro, which means I'm going to look at Dylan's sideboard and I'm going to go looking for some roast here. Now, two Magma Sprays, one Molten Vortex, one Outpost Siege, one Chandra Power Master, three Scab Clan Berserker, a Heal Cutter, a Harness by Force, a Smash of the Reins, and thankfully for Dylan, four roasts. So the roasts are good in this matchup. I, I like the one copy of Harness by Force, I like the one copy of Goblin Rabble Master, and if the Magma Sprays are in the sideboard, here's the thing. Magma Spray is very good against Hanger Back Walker. It is pretty poor against the rest of Giambra's deck. It's the type of card where I could see Dylan saying, on the play, I can just power through this thing, be faster than it. But on the draw, I need to have some good, reliable answers to Hanger Back Walker. Interesting to see how Murphy wants to play this. On the other side of things for Giambra, who coasted easily for that game win, does he have anything else for red? Not a lot going on here on the sideboard. Two Thoughtseize, two Duress, three Herald of Torment, two Tragic Arrogance, two Self-Inflicted Wound, two Glare of Heresy, two Ultimate Price. Really only copies of Ultimate Price and Duress stand out to me as cards that he wants in this matchup. He's got four copies of Obzon Charm. That feels like an easy swap. Well, these players will shuffle up here for game number two. Dylan Murphy will be on the play with this mono red deck. A good place to be with red, of course. We'll talk about Grand Prix Atlanta. The details were unveiled for this yesterday at StarCityGames.com. You can go to StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta for more information on what looks to be one heck of a tournament. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. It'll be Battle of Zendikar sealed. It'll have a commander focus. We're going to have a lot of guests out there like Sheldon Menory, MJ Scott, a lot of artists, cosplayers, and uh, members of the commander community will be available various autograph sessions. You'll have opportunities to talk to them. And of course, there'll be a three-day Grand Prix. And we can't forget about our guest of honor, John Avon as well, will be there to sign cards and chat with November 13th through the 15th. StarCityGames.com slash GP Atlanta, hashtag GP Atlanta as well. We're expecting one heck of a turnout for this event. We're looking forward to seeing each and every single one of you there November 13th through the 15th. We'll be there. Absolutely, we will be. Hanging out commentating on the show, and doing a meet and greet on Friday. Or as I like to call it, a meet. It's just a meet. Because I may or may not greet. Oh, okay. And there's also no obligation for you to greet me. So just a meet. If you want it to be that, we can just meet. What if they wanted to be a greet as well? You got to initiate, but we can... Oh, okay, okay. Well, for me, it's a meet and greet. For right. Patrick, it's just a meet. It's a meet. And or greet. Potentially. I don't want to encumber anyone with a social interaction they're not really looking for. You just want to get your token signed or just sort of hover around for a little while. I don't want to pressure you into thinking that you have to talk. It's just fine. 
What a nice guy you are. You make the experience whatever it is that you want to make it. I got to tell you, you're just such a nice guy. Yeah. You think it's coming from some myth misanthropic place, some introverted place? No. Just want people to make the experience whatever they want to make it. So if you want to agree, cool. And, and if, if you not, that's cool too. Possibly even cooler. For me, you have to meet and greet. Right. You get no choice. You're a, you're a source of energy. I'm here to greet. A man of the people. Mono Red Aggro, off to a 7-0 start here for Dylan Murphy. I've not seen very much of this this weekend. And really, outside of the Pro Tour, this deck has not had much success. Well, there was a, there was a bleak period there right after the Pro Tour where the Obzon decks ratcheted up their hate. The Blue Red Thopter deck, I, I don't think was a great matchup. I played the Mono Red deck at Grand Prix San Diego. I had to put a bunch of Smash the Smithereens on my sideboard to make that matchup feel okay. The metagame's kind of in a different place right now. It's a little bit slower. Uh, people are playing with some clunkier removal spells to try to answer Hangerback Walker. And so uh, Mono Red, I think, is, is better now than it was a couple weeks ago, certainly. I don't think it would be my first choice to play in a tournament right now, but compared to Let's say Grand Prix San Diego, for example, I think it's a better choice. Fair enough. Well, Dylan Murphy will be on the play here. He's off to a great start this weekend, though that last game was fairly ugly. We'll see if these roasts, some other cyborg cards can help him out. Being on the play as well, a big deal. Absolutely. A fire Drinker Seder and friends. Red always wants to be on the play. That's just how this deck works. Especially against Hangerback Walker. It's really important to be on the play against that card. Because when you're on the play, you can often get them to a spot where they played on turn two and they just have to block. Mm -hmm. And it trades with one creature and a removal spell. Maybe the creature, maybe that was their only one topter's creature and then the one one thopter isn't worth very much. You know, you can get it like that. When they're on the play, then sometimes they're activating it or they're killing your two toughness threat and leaving the Hangerback Walker left over. And it's a lot harder to manage. So big deal here for Dylan to be on the play. Well, Dylan has kept his opening hand. And Josh looking for a new hand going down to six. See if he can find a better one. Looks like he's happy enough. Murphy will begin with a mountain, and he does have a one-drop in Monastery Swiss Beer. Into the red zone it comes. Giambra coming to fall down to 19. Important to start off with a one-drop. And not only just to start off with a one-drop, but also to start off with something with two toughness. Take a little bit of this thing out of Hangerback Walker. Okay. Now, if you can kill the Hangerback Walker, you have a 1-1 one -one Thopter in play, and it's not necessarily that bad for you. A mountain. It looks like... Swisper might be the only threat. So Lightning Strike's going to go upstairs. Trigger Prowess, get a bunch of damage in this turn. And I like this play for Murphy. He can't hold on forever in this kind of matchup, so uh, I don't think he can afford to leave any points on the table. He gets one point off the Prowess trigger. You don't like the Lightning Strike there on turn two. You'd rather have another threat, but I prefer Murphy doing that than saying go. And now Giambra's already down to 13. And it's his second turn to the game. There's a Plains. Is there a follow-up? There is. It's a Fleece Main Lion. Murphy will draw. Picked up a copy of Abbott. Here comes land number three. Lightning Strike number two will take care of Fleece Main Lion number one. Jammer will fall down to 11. There's a windswept heap. No black mana yet here for Josh, however. Another fleece main line. Pass the turn back. Murphy untapping. Murphy drawing. Picked up another mountain. Here's Abbott. Trigger. Swift Spear. So that was among the worst cards for Murphy to hit in this spot. If he flips over a land, plays that for free and cast Rose. You flip over a removal spell, cast that. You got Rose left over in your hand. A one-mana creature, uh, you know, you don't want to give up the value of the Abbot, but you also don't want to just say go here. Puts Murphy in a tight spot. Yeah, on this turn, I think that Dylan might just have to slow down. You don't want to miss out on this card. 
just play land and pass the turn back. You can definitely tell he's saving Gross for a siege right now. Although now, the, the problem is, and why I think that Murphy needs to cast his roast in spots like that, is now Dramoka's command is really hard to beat. Yep. I'm going to pass the turn back. Murphy will draw. Eidolon, not bad. Although another car that is a lot worse in the face of Dramoka's command being a concern. Yep. When you got a player over there missing land drops, I think you can be a little bit more patient. You also don't have to worry about Drown and Sorrow because there's no black man over there. Yep. Now an orb war could come out of nowhere and really ruin your day, but... Part of the reason that these Obzon aggro decks are built this way now is to de-emphasize the need for black mana. So it's not even a guarantee he has something like Drown and Sorrow on the sideboard. And in fact, he doesn't. Here's an attempt at Roast. There's a lot that can go wrong here. And I believe Josh does have Dramoka's command. So the max upside play here is prevent all the damage and fight Fleece Mane Lion on Abbott. If Murphy has no spell to follow up with in response, it's a total blowout. The safer play is just to fight the Swift Spear. Yeah, he's going to do prevent the damage and fight. Looks like it might be a copy of Magma Spray there. Yeah, it is. So now this Whisper gets to come over a bunch of damage. Yeah, this is six. Yep. This is okay. No Eidolon to play this turn for Murphy, but Giambra's going to draw a Plains. He'll play that, but I think his hand might just be loaded with black cards. There's a Hero's Downfall and a Dress in hand. Yep, and all you can do is pass the turn back over to Murphy. Murphy will draw. We know he's got Eidolon. I think he may have picked up another copy of Eidolon. It could be the Eidolon hard lock here. I like playing at least one, maybe both. I think one does most of the work. The second one does. I, no, you should, you should probably play both. Just locks out a lot of things. I don't think there's too much that can go wrong. You have to take two to cast the other one, but outside of that, I don't think there's too much that can go wrong. Yeah, the, the risk would be a five mana sweeper, but with... One of Josh's lands being a windswept heat that's hard to do. The, the, the risk there is end hostilities. Sure. I don't like a card you're going to play around from, from red. Exactly. And then your second Eidolon has to be good enough to beat his follow-up, which is no guarantee. So yeah. I just like playing the second one and lock him out of playing things like Drown Sorrow, Dramuka's Command, and so forth. Dylan Murphy does just that. He's going to win game number two here against Josh Giambra. Mono red, obs on aggro, getting ready here for game number three. Now I'm interested to see if Murphy does something different. I think the Magma Sprays become a lot more attractive for him on the draw than they do on the play, as when he's on the draw, he's in more of a need for efficient answers to Hangerback Walker specifically. These players will shuffle up here for game number three. We'll see how things work out for Josh now that he's on the play. See if he can keep a seven-card hand as well as he goes back to the drawing board. Battle for Zendikar pre-release is what we'll talk about here with Star City Games happening September 26th and the 27th. You can pre-register today. Everyone who comes to that pre-release at the Star City Games Center will get this playmat. The Battle for Zendikar playmat will be available for everyone who registers for the pre-release. This is at the Star City Games headquarters in Roanoke, Virginia, the physical store. Can't make it out there? This playmat will be available on the website Monday morning after the pre-release. So if you want to get this playmat, either head to Roanoke, Virginia, or make sure you're on the website first thing Monday morning to get an opportunity to get whatever playmats are left over. StarCityGames.com slash pre-release for more information about that as game number three of round number eight about to take place. Keep in mind at the conclusion of this round, we'll talk about those brand new enemy creature lands. Lumbering Falls, Shambling Vent. Very nice stuff. And creature lands are just awesome. They are. I'm always a big fan. I was wondering when they were going to do the enemy cycle of these. I'm super happy that it's here now. And I'm very curious to see what the other ones are going to look like, too. I, you know, that's one of the things that always leaves me excited with Magic, is what, is that, what are those enemy creature lands going to be? Uh, that's, part of the, that's part of the charm of doing cycles, is that you can create anticipation for the next set. Yep. I remember during the original Ravnica, people were wanting to just see what the names of the new dual lands were going to be, mm -hmm. wanted to see what the new guild pages were going to be, wanted to see, you know, uh, th that's the value of doing cycles, is you set up anticipation and suspense. Sometimes you can never satisfy what people want, though. It's, it's true. Tough. Never going to make everyone happy. Also makes text boxes easier to learn and memorize when they're all part of the same cycle of cards. Yep. So of the five creature lands that were ally-colored, 
Colonnade probably the best of the bunch? Well, three of them are high tier one cards. Okay. In Colonnade, Creeping Tar Pit, Raging Ravine. Yep. I would say the uh, Storing Wildwood is very good. Yep. And Lava Claw reaches probably the weakest of the five. But black red decks are probably in the market for that kind of effect more than other decks are. Sure. So Lava Claw reaches is weaker, but if you made all the the creature lands have the same power level, the red black one would probably show up the most often. Maybe it's raging. I mean, just because of Jun's success across so many formats and over time. I mean. Those lands, I still think those lands are underrated in a historical sense. In a format like Modern, where people die on, you can die on the second or third turn. And turn four is pretty consistent with a lot of different decks. The cost of playing a land in play tapped is enormous. Especially when you don't see the dividends for that land until turn six or seven, usually at the earliest. It says a lot about how good those lands are that they show up in a format as fast as Modern. Really impressive. That is truly notable. Even Cra Craven Tarpit even shows up in Legacy. Yeah, no, that one's, it shows up in the Salt Eye decks. It is, that one's probably the most frustrating one to play against just because it's unblockable and it hits pretty hard. Yeah, that, that, that card is, a lot of that has to do with Jace the Mind Sculptor's presence in the format, mm -hmm. but even still, that card is showing up in a format where you can die on the first turn. Both that, these players are going to take a mulligan here. And Wasteland exists. Yep. And people are willing to play them as, as lands that come into play tapped. So... I, I don't know if people have a real appreciation for just how good those lands are, and I would be really surprised if the next wave was in the same power. I think we're going to be looking much more at the Lava Claw reaches Storing Wildwood level of power. I don't think we're going to see Colonnades and Raging Ravines and, and Creeping Tar Pits. Is my best guess. Well, I'm excited to find out what they're all going to be. Not all going to be released in Battle for Zendikar, going to come out in this set and Oath of the Gatewatch. So there's a little bit of a breakup of them, but there's always been that anticipation. Listen, Daddy needs his Boros land too. <laughs> I predict. Let's see, it's gonna have double strike. I was thinking first strike. First strike but, or double strike? Yeah, first strike or double strike. But I'm deciding how big they would make it. It seems like probably two power. Like a three-one, maybe a two-three. A couple different ways they can go with it. But it's got to be aggressively costed. I feel like it's going to be an aggressive land, not a slow one, like Colonnade, which is five mana to activate. Right. Temple of Malady is where Geombra will start. Here's Lightning Berserker from Murphy. There's land two, Fleece Main Line number one here for Josh. Murphy will draw. Found a mountain, did Josh. He does have a Lightning Strike in hand. So you got a couple lines here. Safe play, Lightning Strike, the Fleece Main Lion. The play with maximum upside, cast the Eidolon, except that you're conceding to Jermoka's command, but you're on the board and you still have a Lightning Strike to answer the Fleece Main Lion. I like this play the most to start. Oh, attack for attack. one. Yeah, attack for one is where you start because you got two mountains in play. Giambra probably doesn't want your East Fleece Main Lion for your Lightning Berserker. And if he does, that's okay. I'm happy with that. Don't mind that either. One damage will be dealt. All right. Love well. it. Love it. There's a real risk associated with this. If Giambra has Jermokas command, we're probably done here. If he doesn't, though, this is a great spot. Will Murphy get to untap with two creatures on the battlefield still? And it's just so anemic for Murphy to use the Lightning Strike. Giambra at that point, well, if he untaps and plays Anafenza, now you can't kill that. Mm -hmm. You got a Lightning Strike in your hand, so I like Murphy going for broke here. Definitely looks bad if Giambra's got Jermokas command, but he's in great position if he doesn't. And as I've mentioned before, you cannot win them all. Well, Josh pretty deep in the tank here. I think he may have Dramokas command in hand. He's just going to pass the turn back. So I don't know if he's just hoping to get 
He's just trying to get the whole shebang here. If he's trying to get the whole shebang, greedy. Because now the problem is what happens when, what happens if Dylan says land creature go with two mana up? Then your Dramoka's command is pretty awkward to use. You can't even, even if he just says, plays land says go, you can't go sack an enchantment and fight the Lightning Berserker, or you can, but Dylan can then pump the Lightning Berserker. I think Chiambra might have gotten himself in some trouble here. Ah, never mind. This is great. Well, I mean, he does, he does get to get him pretty good here with this. No, this, is, this ends up being great for Chiambra. I think that if Murphy had played Swiss Spear and said go, yeah. then things get a little awkward for Giambra. But if he's playing everything in right now, Giambra gets it all. Two damage going to be dealt by the Eidolon for both players. Lightning Strike and Dramokus Man trigger it. So on the Lightning Strike is countered by the Dramokus Command and Eidolon bites the dust. John, we're going to sacrifice the Windswept Teeth. Go down to 16, search up a forest or plains. But that Dramokus Command traded with four mana, two cards, and two high-value cards in the matchup. So it was pretty great there. Well, Dramokus Command always, always good in this matchup. Well, Giambra has to get something into play. That's yeah. the risk with, with Dramokus Command. Game two there, you know, Murphy could keep him off of being able to do anything with Dramokus Command. On the play, though, pretty hard to stop Giambra from being able to play a Fleece Bade line or a Hangerback Walker or something. Let's see what Josh is brewing up now. Soren. Okay. Pretty good turn. Well, this is a little rough against a removal spell because... If Dylan can kill the Fleece Main Lion with a spell, that Swiss Fury comes a 2-3, and now Giambra has to either allow the Soren to die or chump block with a Vampire. I suppose Giambra could have plus the Soren, but a removal spell on the Fleece Main Lion kills Soren the same way. At least this way, Giambra gets a 2-2 flyer for his troubles. Well, we'll see what's next for Mr. Murphy. Here come the beatdowns. Like this attack here from Dylan. Like Lightning Berserker or Josh. Put Giambra in the squeeze here. Yep. Always a good goal. Soren's a goner or the vampire's chump blocking. That's great. You trade your Lightning Berserker with the vampire. Well, something like that's happening at some point. Yeah, that's a good attack here. There's a pump. It, might just, it looks like no block at all. So the bad news here is Wingmate Rock. And a no blocks here might indicate that could indicate also Dramoka's command and the need to keep something in play to fight. The command might just be happening right now. So counter there and fight the Lightning Berserker. Pass the turn back. Murphy will draw. We know he's got an Abbott in hand. He'll start there. Take a look at the top card. It's a mountain. So we get to hit one of those. And all you can do is simply pass the turn back. And Giambro may have turned the corner now. Yep. That Abbott was very important. Needed to be able to do a little bit better in the land. And now there's a dead protector face down. This is where it gets tough. Giambro still with a lot of life to play with. Yeah, 14 is quite a bit when playing against a red deck. And we're this deep into the game. And it looks like Murphy just has two lands in hand. If that's the case, Den Protector, Soren, Jeroka's Command, they get to take over this game. There's a mountain, pass the turn back. Den Protector will be unmegamorphed. It'll get a counter, of course. Looks like Jeroka's Command's going to be returned. And Giambra looking to move on to 8 0. Here come the attackers, feeling comfortable enough to get into the red zone now. Yeah, Murphy needs to play something to be able to block the Den Protector, so. Pretty safe looking attack here. 
There's a siege right now. Don't know if there's any coming back from this one now. Looking real tough. And that is going to do it. Josh Yomber is going to win this match here over Dylan Murphy. Two games to one. Obzon Agro will take care of Mono Red Agro. And for Obzon Agro, which we know is a very popular deck this weekend with or without Hangerback Walker, up to 8-0. No.